Hello and welcome to my working from home video. I am Diane Patterson and I'm the head of delivery for True Potential Group. Some of you might already know that if you've seen me. I've been on a couple of the podcasts with some of the team. Um, so you might be familiar with my introduction for those that haven't. Yes, I'm the head of delivery for True Potential Group. And today I'm going to try and give you a little bit of an insight into what my average day is like, but also what the head of delivery actually means. Now, you might be wondering why I'm in a random room with no PC, and that's because Neil work shifts, and last night he didn't finish till three o'clock in the morning. I've started this a little bit earlier so that I can come and do the introduction, give him a little bit of time, and then I'll take you upstairs, start you on my morning calls, explain what they're about, why we have them, and as I go through the day, I'll try and explain a little bit more about what the head of delivery actually is. But in the meantime, first morning coffee has to be done. I'll see you up there. Welcome to upstairs. This is my current workstation. So you can see the obligatory two monitors that we all have in head office. I'm assuming you've seen them in other people's working from home videos. I've just had the first of two morning calls. The first is with the development team whereby in the office we would do stand-ups where it is a physical stand-up away from the desk. A quick five minutes just to run down, are there any issues, does anybody need any help, are people likely to meet their deadlines and what's ahead for them in that particular day. The second of the two calls, the one that I'll, I'll show you now, is the 9.30 morning call that we have with all of the team leaders. So it's a, it's a senior call whereby we speak to the senior team. And again, it's largely the same as the call with the development team, but in this vein, it's, it's us letting the senior team know how we're fixed for the day ahead, whether there are any issues, whether we need anything from them, and certainly whether they need anything any more from us. It, it is just a, usually a five, ten minute roundup as to yesterday's actions and what we'll be doing the rest of today. So, as I mentioned, this is the 9.30 call, and as we're just about to get started, you can see people dialing in along the top there. And before the meeting's about to start, yes, I'm on mute, so nobody can hear me saying this, or I'd probably be getting a little bit of stick from the headset. Um, and I'll be back with you in a second when it's finished. Now that the morning calls are done and dusted, I can spend a little bit more time with you, just telling you a little bit more about me, how I came to work at True Potential, and a little bit more about the role that I perform now. I started with True Potential in 2008, as a developer. I then moved into the role of training because Nick Redfern, who was head of implementation at the time, was going on holiday. He asked me if I wouldn't mind taking the training course for two weeks. Two weeks, not just two weeks. Nick Redfern never came back into training when he came back from his holiday. So yes, I took up the training role, became head of training, had a, a team working with me when the advisor side of things completely took off for true potential. And from there, we learned that some of the advisors didn't actually want to leave. So as opposed to them having their own firm where they wanted to stay with True Potential, we had a firm called EWG that morphed into PCS, Private Client Strategies, that then became, as we know it today, True Potential Wealth Management. And I moved from the training role into the operations manager role for those three firms consecutively. And here I am um, now as head of delivery for True Potential Group, having had a segue, I think, from each of those roles. It's given me the, I suppose, the skills and the qualities that I need to be able to be the head of delivery for True Potential Group. What I do on a daily basis can vary. So it can vary from one day I might spend entirely in calls with the development team, other areas of the business, the senior team trying to establish what we need, where we're going and how quickly we can get there. And then other days I might be sat with headphones on or not headphones on because I have a speaker there. And I don't need to wear headphones because I'm in my house. So I'm allowed to have music on that other people can hear. Um, yeah, so I might just be sat alone in my little room just actually going through requirements, drawing up process flows to give the business or the senior team more of a visual as to what it is that they may have asked for. 
try and establish whether I've got the right end of the stick. Is that actually what they want? And from there, we'll then create things like functional requirements and um, work with a design team to produce conceptual and functional designs to give to, again, the business to ensure that before we get into the build process and before this gets as far as the development team, that we actually know what it is that we're about to deal and deliver. So, um, yeah, um, quite a, a varied day, really, but it, it largely hasn't changed now that I'm remote based as opposed to when we were in the office, I think for us, because of the way in which development works, it was very easy for us just to pick up our machines, move them home and carry on in the same vein. Because again, there can be days where you need to speak to people consistently, but there also can be days where you are in your own world, in your own head, just getting through the work that has been assigned to you. So with that in mind, I report directly into Dan Harrison, who is the chief executive. And that in itself can come with tough conversations. So as much as I'm the head of delivery for True Potential Group, I also support the entire development team and manage the entire development team in relation to the rest of the business. So we have True Potential Investments, which is the platform. We have the investment management firm. We have True Potential Advisor Services and we have True Potential Wealth Management. Now, each of those respective areas will come to me to say, hi, Di, Please can we have, or we've now got a process that's changed for whatever reason it might be, and what was previously delivered is no longer fit for purpose, so can we make changes or change requests? But they'll also come with new developments in terms of regulatory requirements. The FCA will impose changes, and we have to knuckle down and get those changes done within the regulatory deadlines. So it, it's a very, very varied role at times, and very challenging because, like I mentioned, I have all of those areas coming and saying, hello, Di, please can we talk about X, Y, and Z? And I have to try and negotiate those X, Y, and Zs with those business areas. Um, in order to do that, I have a monthly meeting with the heads of business to talk about ultimately what they've submitted and what the other business areas have submitted. And we will discuss, shall I say, who might get what and within what time frame and Naturally, some things will take a back seat and others won't. Others will. Everything will be dropped in order to deliver what is required. An example of that is the digital direct offer process that we did. I think it was two days before the UK was actually forced into lockdown. We knew it was coming. So Dan came to me and said, hi, Di, 10 minutes in media room, please, where we draw on white walls. Not these walls. These walls won't be being drawn on. And we have taken a paper-based process and within seven to 10 days, we'd completely digitalized it. And Dan was very aware that whatever we else we had to do was going to be dropped in order to accommodate that solution. But they're the, I say sacrifices, they're the sacrifices that the senior team are prepared to make in order to make sure that end clients don't suffer at the hands of a legacy process that we've never really needed to consider because it worked. So... In that vein, I think lockdown has given us an opportunity to actually take stock and look at what we do. And just because it works, does that mean it's right? So what's been born out of that have been more calls, more meetings to discuss other areas of true potential that are also maybe paper-based or have a paper element just to see what we can do outside of that to make sure that our digital offering is largely... 100% as and where it can be. Um, so yeah, as head of delivery, all the roles that I've had previously have led up to this, but have given me a good foundation. Because I was a developer, I understand and know how to talk to the development team. Some might disagree. <laughs> um, but yeah, to try and get them what they need in order to be able to do their job well. I can articulate how and why some things won't work the way that the business might assume they do, because I know how the system is built and the foundations that it's been built on. So I think that's just been a little whistle stop to her because I could, I could talk and bore you with this for quite a while, <laughs> but I'll try not to do that today because there's quite a lot to get through and I need to get back to work. So I'll catch you at lunchtime. It's lunchtime now and guess which clown decided in lockdown that she wanted to do some decorating. So Neil's up and we're just about to head to a local DIY store 
to look for paint. I'll be back. Well, that was largely pointless. I mean, who would have thought that places will sell out of base coat with none on order? Um, however, did get a carpet sample though, so all's good. Wasn't a totally wasted journey. So this is me back in the house, back in the kitchen. Just about to have, gonna have a sweet chili chicken panini, I think. You can get the kettle boiling. So that'll be the second cup of coffee of the day. I then have a call at 2 p.m. and who knows what after that. Here we are again. Um, you might notice that since the last little section of video, which I think was lunchtime and just before the two o'clock call, I was a little bit windswept. I hadn't noticed that until I, I watched that little excerpt back. So you might see that I've, I've, I've brushed my hair now because I'm on camera. Um, so this afternoon, yeah, had the two o'clock call as normal. So I think Dan mentioned this in his working from home video. It's the client experience unit call where we get together to discuss again, ways forward, where we're at, um, what we want to do next and as and when things are going to be released. And I think you can just see things in Teams messages dropping in behind there. Um, I've also just had a call with Mr. Rayner, who did his working from home video. Not sure whether he'd had four cans of Foster's and what was it, a steak bake today? He didn't mention that. Um, I should have asked actually, but I forgot. So I think what other people have covered are the challenges in lockdown. And for me, I'm struggling more now than I was originally, which is a little bit odd. But I think because when we went into lockdown, everything was closed. Couldn't go anywhere, couldn't see anybody and everybody was in the same boat. Now they've started to open up things but the shine's being taken off so if I want to go to a restaurant yes I have to make a reservation which it's not an issue but I'm not entirely sure about the surroundings do I need to wear a mask do I not if I want to go out socially again what's it going to be like I just don't know if I want to go shopping you can't try anything on you what you can look but you can't touch again I'm not really sure about it so we've gone through a phase of knowing exactly where we stand don't go out unless it's absolutely necessary and now you can kind of go out if you want, but your risk. You can go here, you can have some food, your risk. You can, you can go, the, it is, it's just bizarre. So I'm, I'm struggling more with that now because I'm not one being confined to a single space. I like to be out and about and I like to be busy and I like to be doing things. So I think that's when I've got the choice. But when I didn't have the choice originally, you've just, you just have to suck it up and get on with it. And then, like I said, of course, I decided to um, decorate, but... We'll not talk about that because I might get a bit huffy. Um, so Neil has just gone out. He's gone to another local <laughs> DIY store looking for more base coat. I've since had two messages that ultimately I've ignored because I, there's not really much I can say. It's base coat. Um, and this afternoon I have, it's now quarter to four. I've got another call at four o'clock. That's a, it's not a random call. It's a scheduled call, but it's it's a meeting about, I think, new business. So it's not something that has previously been arranged. It's largely just dropped in. But at 16.45 every day, I have the kind of the last call of the day with the enabling team from development. We are collectively, um, we have got the head of platform development, which is Dave Gracie. We have head of group applications, David Reed and Stephen Thornton, the head of infrastructure. And the four of us just get together at quarter to five every day to make sure that, again, no system downtime. There's been nothing that the rest of us aren't aware of. If there has, we just update each other. And then we know kind of where, what position we're in before we go into the morning calls tomorrow. So we have that call late enough in the day to do something if there's something wrong, but early enough in the day to do something if there's something wrong, but late enough in the day to kind of know how things are and how the land lies. Probably won't speak to you now until 5.30 and I've got a little surprise for you then. So I'll keep that under my hat and I'll see you shortly. So just after 5.30, she says, having left the house at 5.29, but let's not tell Dan that and be our secret. And the eagle-eyed of you will say that I might be at the office there's been a very special delivery for me at True Potential today, so I've come to collect it. There she is! Our Esther McCausland. 
So a lot of you will know that people have been talking about their fitness levels and what they've been doing to maintain their fitness. Um, I can't really talk about that because I've largely done very little, which is no different than when I'm actually at work in the office, to be fair. Neil's got some weights in the garage, so I might have done a couple of bicep curls and maybe a few squats. Actually, Esther and I did some squats and some lunges while we were on an all-day conference call. Um, so as Esther's come down to the office today, I've just come down to meet her. We're going to go for a walk and have um, probably quite a lengthy catch-up. So I shall social distance you all and say good night and see you on the other side.